what we do here is go back, 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 back. I get asked a lot what kind of lenses I use for what applications, when to use this lens, when to use that, what lenses do I have personally. Today we're going to be tackling that. I'm also going to be covering which lens I use in which situation, why I would use that lens in that situation, and why these three lenses that I have are the ones that are right for me, and why they might or might not be right for you. So let's get started. All right, so the first and most common lens that I use is here, this guy. This is the Rokinon 14 millimeter. This lens is great for all those rooftop shots because it over exaggerates height and size. So when I'm on roofs or when I want to exaggerate the size of something, um, like height for example, uh, this lens does a great job of making things look bigger than they appear. Um, so that's why I love this guy. It creates lots of depth and adds more excitement to my shots. Because it's good in low light at f2.8, aperture opens pretty wide. It's pretty good uh, in dark situations like nighttime or stuff. Something that you should know about the Rokinon lens is that this lens does not have autofocus. So this is a completely manual lens, also meaning that the aperture ring is here on the uh, on the lens itself. I control the aperture on the lens itself. I don't know if you can see that whole opening and closing there. That is the aperture blades inside the lens controlled on the lens. There are no electronics in this lens that communicate with your camera, so that is something to keep in mind if you do like autofocus. Alright, so my next lens uh, I'm going to be covering is actually recording this video right now. That is my Sigma 24mm f1.4 art lens for Sony. The Sigma art lenses have always been my favorite. They are quite pricey, but the results do show uh, when you start looking back at your footage and your photos. The 24mm is probably my most commonly used lens on the ground and for video work. Um, it's still super wide, but it's versatile, you can get up close. I use this lens for the majority of my portraits as well. I kind of break the rules, I shoot portraits with a wide angle lens as opposed to a 50mm or 85 but I think 24 does a great job um, uh, of capturing an environment and your subject at the same time. Sure, you can do the same thing with a 50 but the 24 like I said again, exaggerates size. You can kind of bend the rules a little bit um, and make things look a lot more interesting in my opinion. Also at f1.4, you're getting very good low light performance and uh, very blurry backgrounds to go with that as well. The one thing I would like to note about the Sigma 24 millimeter uh, f1.4 is that the vignetting is very heavy around the corners, especially wide open at f1.4. This isn't too much of a problem for photographers, but for people who do video work, this can be quite an issue uh, as correcting vignetting is quite a problem uh, in post-production. Right, that leaves us with our last lens here, uh, the last of my kit. Uh, this is the Samyang 85mm f1.4. This lens is an absolute beast. The longer your focal length, the more intense depth of field becomes. Uh, so at f1.4, this lens provides extreme, extreme background blur. Um, very smooth, creamy backgrounds and great in low light. Uh, the focal length on this lens is pretty long and it's much different than that of a 50mm. So going from 50 to 85 can be a bit of a challenge. I found it to be my preferred lens over the two just because of that more intense depth of field effect and a little bit more compression because it's longer. I'd like to use this lens a lot more. I don't shoot portraits as much as I'd like and usually when I do, I use the 24, but I've been starting to experiment a bit more and use this lens um, for video work and portraits alike. Uh, here's a couple examples shot with the Samyang 85mm f1.4. If I had to recommend any lens for the beginner photographer trying to get away from their kit lens, I'd highly suggest the 50mm f1.8. It's usually quite inexpensive, provides nice depth of field, a decent amount of compression. It's very natural to what we see as a human being with our own eyes. It's pretty good in low light too because of that uh, f1.8 aperture. So uh, I'll link a couple 50mm uh, f1.8s in the description below depending on your camera brand and you can check those out. What I do to test the lens out to see if I like it, uh, there's a place by me called Ontario Camera Rental. You can rent a lens for a whole weekend for $45. Um, that's a good way to test out a lens to see if you like it or not. Take it on a few shoots, go out with some friends, test it out. If you really like it, then you can consider buying it. So that's a good way to test stuff out without paying that huge price tag just to see if you like it or not. So yeah, those are my three lenses that I use and they work great for me. Uh, I think the next big purchase uh, for me is going to be the Sigma Art 
85 millimeter f1.4 i'm getting kind of sick of not having autofocus with this guy so i think i'm going to be buying the 85 with autofocus to definitely uh, speed up taking 85 millimeter shots anyways that's it for uh, today's video if you guys like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more see you in the next one